do 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 let's see oh there we go um right uh right uh, just a short stream just right this is my trigger coil i'm making two of these and they're very fiddly because the wire is um, very fine. It's 40, um, 44 SWG. We don't require current, we mostly need voltage. Um, and it's uh, because the coils are small and tiny and it has to fit inside the, um, uh, the, the end drum because it has to fit inside this end drum and the coil goes in this little hole here and uh, for the timing to adjust it um, because the coils have to be so small I have to use thin wire but um, I haven't tested this to see if it was going to work but I'm pretty sure it will um, obviously there's enough turns on there I mean I must have been going forever I use my electric screwdriver with a bit of blue tack on the end just to wind this because it's so tiny it's just not practical to stick it on my reel to reel because the wire is so thin um it would have snapped probably if i'd got too much tension on it so i decided to do it manually and i doesn't matter about the number of turns just just made sure that the bobbin was filled up and that's one without the wire on so you can see the difference uh, there's quite a bit of wire on there it's 42 or oh, 45 swg so now i've got the daunting task uh, of um soldering these wires onto these little copper strips that I stuck on there to because the wire is so thin it would snap off quite easily so I decided to put copper strips on this one on these and then I still have to tie this one off this wire I used some super glue to it's so thin I can't see the damn wire it's I've got to use my um, uh, glasses my uh, watchmaker glasses so I'm going to put these on now and uh, because it's fiddly and you're probably not going to see this one I don't know I'll try and do this under the um, my hands are always getting in the way where what is it um, right my hands are always getting in the way but I am going to attempt to get that wire threaded in that little copper strip so I can solder the wire on I made a little notch in it um, you're not you're probably not gonna see a lot because my eyes my there's not much light here and um, I don't use anything sharp to poke this in so I'm just using my fingernail because this wire is still ugh. if it snaps off I'm gonna have to start again well actually luckily this wire is on the outside so I won't have to start again but the wires that are on the inside if they snapped off yeah I would have to start again <laughs> you know what I mean um, so I've got to get my fingernail uh, just on that wire and put and see if I can get it into that slot it's going to be it's, it's fiddly once I get it over the slot I can, if I can push it in there um uh, right get in there once I get in the slot I solder it so I'm, I'm hoping that the bobbin doesn't split on me and come apart that's always a possibility oh there's not enough light here hang on where's my torch my uh oh that's better oh yeah oh I can see I am I was blind and I was see I wasn't using the top the little lamps on the um, glasses because they've got little lamps on the glasses but yeah they're those little crummy little tiny button cells and once they run flat that's it I was trying to make do without using them well I'm gonna have to use something to poke that in I use my blunt knife oh wrong end um, I use a blunt knife just to get it in that slot because it's such a pain. Um, 
if I'm not careful, I'll just cut the wire off with this thing because it. Yeah. I am not having a lot of fun, a lot of joy right now. Right, if I get my fingernail on the other end. Um, holding it so it doesn't move around. I'm just sliding it. You ought to see probably what I'm doing. It's just so tiny. Right, I'm in the slot. I'm just getting my fingernail up behind it. Printer's about to start another print. Ah, it moved. Mm. Right, get in there. I think my fingernail's too thick as well. I use my thin the fingernail on. I might have got super glue in it. That's probably what's happened. Ah, I think it's gone in. No, it hasn't. Well, I'm just going to have to hold that over the top and solder it on like that because I can't get it in the slot right so if I um, get a bit of blue tack Um, stick the blue tack on the opposite end to hold that wire in place. Then I'm just going to solder it as it is. Well, I'll see what's happened. The copper is peeled back a bit. Oh, well, that's good. I can just push the copper over the top of the wire. Right. I doubt very much we've got to continue to on there yet because um, the, in, the insulation is still um, on. What's going on here? Oh, I've got a loop, a wire loop. That's got to be taken out. Ah, right, so... I didn't see that. Um, yeah, a bit of slack in this wire, so that's not ready yet. I'm going to have to pull this through. Uh, so if I pull that end, it should take that loop of the wire in. Right. All right, I've got that tight now. Uh, Tartish. Forty-two SWG is extremely thin. I don't know if you know. Um, right. I I'm trying to pull on it because I snap it off. Right. I'm going to put this on the table, and I'm going to attempt to solder that. Uh, then I can do a continuity check. Uh, oh 
I don't want this stream to be too long because it's boring. <laughs> um, water on my sponge as it's dried up again. Good. Right. Uh, where's the silver gone? Where have you gone? Oh, there you are. <sighs> okay, so when we're up to, uh, I need to be up to 300 Celsius because I'm going to burn off that, um, burn off that insulation off the um, enamel copper wire. I'm going to move this thing out of the way because I might knock it or something. Right, we're at 272, 296, well, good enough there. Oh, can't get the end of the solder now. Right, hopefully I can get this soldered on there. This is going to start moving around, I can see it coming. Uh, oh, I'm soldered stuck to the blooming blue tack, what the heck, come here. Right. Um, I'm just fingers crossed that this will this will stick. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get emery paper on it. Right. Ah. Right. Turn it over. Got the other side to do. Actually, I'll leave the blue tack on there, and it will hold it on the table while I'm doing the other side. Once it's stuck on, I can snap the end of the wire off. Um, once I'm sure it's connected properly. Should have burnt the enamel off. Let's find out with a meter. Have we got continuity now? Uh, not yet. I don't know. It depends on what the impedance is. It might be really high. Uh, it might be in the kilo on range, so I might not make, me, make a beep. Well, we've got no connection yet. Damn it! I really thought that would burn through it, but it hasn't. Well, I am going to have to um, 
Where's my Emery paper? I'm going to have to... Oh, actually, I'll use my file. I'm just going to gently stroke this wire. Actually, this is diamond tip, so the diamond could cut straight through that wire, and I wouldn't even know it. I might take the whole wire off. Where's my Emery paper gone? I'm going to have to solder it on the folded end. Because I've gone and buried the other end in the solder, even though it's not stuck to the solder. So even though the solder is not actually melted onto the wire, or next time I'm going to have to emery paper it, even though it's risky doing that. But it didn't burn through. It did not burn through, which is annoying. Hang on, I need something to hold this. It's a bit better. Let me just stick the tweezers through the middle. That's better. You probably can't see what I'm doing now. Um, Ah, oh, the copper tape's coming off, don't you come off, do you dare? Right, is that connected? Get my meter on it again. I'll find out. Oh wow, we've got 90 ohms. It's not enough to make it beat, but we've got, we've got a resistance now. Oh. 90 ohms. Wow, that's good for a trigger coil. My uh, washing machine is out of balance. Hang on a minute. I hate it when it gets at that resonant frequency and my, my washing machine just checks the whole place apart then it gets up to it's because I've got a pillowcase in there <laughs> okay so I've got the wire soldered on um, I've got a lot to, a, a bit too much solder on that end I really don't like that so I'm not going to break them off yet because now that I've got a, a connection a physical connection I'm going to I'm going to see if I can get some of this solder off here because there's a bit too much on here. Oh, it's cooled down a bit. Damn it, I've got to wait, let it warm up again now. Ah. On the bright side of things, at least this 40... I've had this 44 SWD wire since, well, many years. It's made by Maplin, so... 
Um, pretty good stuff. Right, let's see. I just don't want too much solder on the end of here. I'm going to have to check continuity every time I do this. I'm just trying to get some of the excess solder, solder off there. Uh, that seems to be better. Right, a lot of solder on this end. Okay. I just want to heat sink it a bit. Right, that feels a bit better. I don't need to be sticking out because it'll sticking out because it will catch. I can fire that, I suppose, but then, right, if it's sticking out, it's not going to work too well in my uh, adjustable coil scenario. Uh, there's a bit too much copper stuff sticking out on the inside now. I'm going to file that off. Yeah, this copper tape, it's moved a bit on it towards the centre and I'm just filing that. Right, let's check continuity, continuity again. It's freaking 90 ohms. God, that's weird. That's really high. It's all right. But it's all connected. 89.6 yeah we're still connected okay that's good for me uh, I have to break off these end, these end bits of wire now because they're a bit long so I'm just going to bend them until they snap because it's it'll snap easy-ish there you go it's snapped off look that's how fragile this stuff is uh, do the other end I'm going to be soldering um, some leads on to here. That's come off now as well. Right, so we've got our coil. I think I'll unplug this solder now because I don't want to accidentally burn myself on it. Uh, Right, so if I get my uh, coil holder, now there's, oops, there's something uh, I designed into this about, you know, for the coil, because I, I understood that it's going to be moving the coil around, so I made some little grooves. There are some fine little, I don't know if you can see this, there's a, there's a little groove that runs through here, and there's a a hole, actually it's supposed to be a hole, let me take this clip off a minute uh, let's get it off, right, so this clip comes, this this uh, lever comes off the hole goes all the way through the other side, right so the idea is that I, when the coil's fitted, the wires uh, are routed through this little groove then I stick the wires in place they come out the back, then they run up to the very tip of where the handle is, the lever is, and the wires terminate at that point where the lever comes out, so that the wires aren't going to get caught in the mechanism, so that they come out at that point. So this coil, uh, let me just double check it now, I've snapped the wires off, because no my luck, it would stop working now, but <laughs> you never know, dear. Let's, uh, let's just put the meter back. Uh, so you can see what's going on. Right. The meter, can you see that? Mm. Right, there's the meter. Right, let's check this coil again. Make sure we've still got our continuity. Oops. Right. Mm. Oh, wait. Looks like we have. Mm, was it 80, 88? Oops. Yeah, just not enough to make it beep, but it's it's definitely working. The coil's still good, so that's all right. 
Now, so one coil that goes in here is going to be fixed and the other one's going to be rotating. So, a coil will go in here like this. And once it's in the right position, I'm going to glue it in place once I've got the wire soldered on. I just want to test fit everything at the moment. Um, oh, I see what's happening. The um, copper tape sticking out and it won't let it go flush. Um, well, this is a bit of a risk. I've got to file off that bit of copper tape and I just don't want to catch the wires. Yeah, if I catch the wires, it will be completely ruined. And that wires, that copper tape sticking out right about there at the end. Doesn't take long to wind them though. Right. I've got to check this again on my meter. Every time I do something, I've got to check it so I don't I haven't broken the wires. <sighs> yeah, we're still good. Oops. I think. 89.9. Yeah, we're still good. I'll be interested to find out what voltage comes out of this when it's on next to the magnets. Now it should fit better now because there was some copper tape sticking out before. Right. Ah, yeah, perfect fit. Look at that, perfect fit. So my trigger coil is now inside the the little clasp that I made on the adjustment lever. I've got to solder the wires onto these, which is another delicate task. And I'm probably going to use more 42 s to the G wire and just solder it on because it's really thin. Then I can route it through this little, this tiny little channel through that hole, which comes out the other side and then it'll come out of and the wires um, will come out over here and it won't matter if the wires snap because I can solder directly back onto the bobbin to do my wires so I'm going to need another termination point on the lever so I'm probably going to stick some more copy tape copper tape on the lever and then I can solder my wire straight onto the lever or I'm just going to have some thicker wire going through this little channel which is probably a better idea. Have a bit thicker wire going through this channel. Say, uh, what? 30 SWG or maybe a bit higher, maybe 34 SWG wire. Something that's thicker, that's easy to manage. I can route through this little channel. And then once I've got wire coming out, I'll be able to tap these, the connection onto the onto there so that's my coil look at that perfect fit it's flush with the actual lever as well so that goes in on my thing like this and then my adjustable timing coil will move oops yeah, i need something on the back of here to start so it doesn't fly off now that's better once you get it positioned right Something's catching on the bottom there. It's, oh, it's not in the groove. Get in the groove. It has to be the coil has to sit in this. There's a little groove. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a there's a channel that goes around all the way around here. And if that coil isn't sitting inside the channel, it will disengage itself. Now it's in the channel. Oops! I pulled it out again. Yeah, I need to I need to put a back. I need to make another ring with, and and glue that on so it stops this from 
popping out all the time. Uh, get it down there. Right. So if I put my finger on the end just so, so it doesn't pop off, we should be alright. That's good, it works. Another thing I, I, I overlooked was, mind you, this thing isn't moved all the time. Once you adjust this and get it right, you just leave it, basically. You don't need to keep moving it. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's good. It's catching on something under there, that. But it, just, it won't go that far anyway because another coil is going to be there. So there's going to be a static coil that's mounted in this position here. And there's no way it's going to be that far up anyway. So the adjustment range is really from this end to about somewhere out here. Because I measured the existing distance on the existing timing system on, on the other, other device. That's how I worked out how, what the distances were need to travel for the adjustment range and yeah mm. and this is shrunk a bit I use acetone on this whole thing and it was tight the other day and now it's, it's a bit loose now because the plat the ABS plastic has shrunk a little bit and now it's a bit loose you know this ring is just keeps popping off all the time but once it's assembled, this will meet up with the um, will meet up with a washer or something, uh, and uh, 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 which would keep it on. But ideally, that thing is going to be spinning. That's on the other side, so I really need. To, I just need to put another washer on here and stick it on, so it stops that from popping off. And I'm probably going to do that instead. Um, that's probably a better way of doing it. So I need to 3D print it myself a little washer that sticks on top hmm. anyway uh yeah that's it um, uh, oh my god the phone's red hot right so one coil round i've got to wind another one just like that one as I say, I will be interested in seeing what voltage comes out of it. I'll have to stick it on the oscilloscope, and because uh, it does couple with the side of the magnets, not the end of the magnet. So, as a mag, oops, right, there's a magnet drum. I also used some fiber, uh, glass fiber tape around the drum. I thought, well, and I soaked the outside with a bit of ABS plastic and acetone, just a very thin layer to seal the ends of the tape, so it wouldn't wouldn't come peeling off or anything. I did that for extra safety. I thought, well, instead of using a steel band, which really is not practical because it, it's soldered at the ends, I decided to go with this fiberglass. Well, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, it's that heat proof tape. And I think it's got, got glass fiber in it, so it should be extremely strong. So, my drum, um, anyway, the timing coils will be triggered by the sides of the magnets, but there's enough flux on the sides anyway. So, if I get that my magnetic gauge and I stick this drum like that like that and I put my gauge it's going to push it or it's going to push it now you watch it's going to fly on the floor in a minute um I'll lay it flat right there's enough flux on the side there to trigger the coils as you can see around that edge so I don't have to be directly on the front I can be on the edge there which is where the trigger coils are going to be. So the trigger coils are going to be picking up the flux right from this edge, right this line. If you look at the line alignment, oops, uh, files are sticking to everything now. So if I turn this around, you'll see that the trigger coil is mounted right on that edge. You see? So that's right in the middle there. As I'm turning it around. So the trigger coil is right there, 
right on the edge of the drum where it can pick up the flux to do the trigger in so I don't have to have a trigger coil mounted directly over the head overhead on the edge of the drum it can be just on the side because that's where we get um, uh, what's going on with my gauge so that's where we get our flux from oops ah go away um, right there has to be right on the edge which it is yeah so that's going to work fine i don't have to have great big massive coils for the trigger coils because they're only driving a base uh well they're only driving the opto isolators in this situation on my breadboard they're just driving the opto isolators which is basically just an led and because i've got what 90 ohms on the coil i expect i'm gonna get and there's a lot of turns on there i, I should get enough current to drive the opto isolators i don't think it's going to require much current at all and uh, yeah anyway that's it for now talking too much